All right, everybody. Thanks again so much for joining us. We appreciate you being here today. I'm sure we might get a few more folks jumping on. We're glad you're here with us live. Uh, we want to talk today about driving high volume recruitment success in healthcare, and we're going to be featuring Dahlia and Mercy, and this is brought to you by Talent Board. And let me introduce our speakers and let them share a little bit more about themselves. We've got Paul Kinsey from Mercy, the executive director of TA Innovation, and Sam Fitzroy, the co-founder and CEO of Dahlia. I'm Kevin Grossman, president of Talent Board and the Candidate Experience Awards. Paul, tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do today, please. Sure. So uh, I've been with Mercy now for 10 years. I started out on the uh, IT consulting side before Mercy and I wanted to kind of move more to the corporate side. So uh, cut my teeth kind of recruiting initially. I've been managing since 2017, uh, managed our St. Louis team initially, and then um, 2019 took on really all of our talent systems and advertising and then our uh, pre-boarding process as well. So Excited to, uh, to be with here with you today. Excellent. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Sam, tell us a little bit more about you. Yeah, Sam Fitzroy, co-founder and CEO at Dahlia. Um, I live up outside of Boston. I'm kind of new to this area. A couple of years prior to this, I was I was in New York City. Um, and uh, I've got two little boys. One is three months uh, and one is three and a half. Uh, so hands are full. Lots of fun. Um, and, uh, in terms of my background, been in the recruitment tech space since 2008, um, was with Indeed for a while and then, uh, did some work for some other job boards, uh, and got started on Dahlia a few years back. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. And Sam, how's the sleep, how's the sleep going at night, Sam? Uh, it's, it's good. Like a lot better than it was. Yeah. Okay, good. We're, good we're on the, the upward trend. It's good. It's, it's always, it's an amazing journey. That's for sure. Yes. And thank you. And thanks, everybody. So th this is what we're going to cover today. Lots of good stuff. I'm not going to read it verba verbatim for you, but obviously a lot about the recruitment marketing funnel and high volume applicant flow and everything related to that, especially as it relates to healthcare, but even beyond too. Um, please make sure if you do have questions to use the Q&A part of the Zoom dashboard and or the chat which works fine, like we were having you comment where you're at today, because we will take them throughout. So if you've got a timely question that I'm happy to interject um, with Paul and Sam, uh, have them answer it, then we don't have to wait until the end. So feel free to ask throughout, especially if something's top of mind and timely based on what you're hearing. Okay. So that's the plan for today. So what I want to do now is um, I'm going to kind of go into the background, but it'll be right here. And Paul, I'm going to let you talk a little bit more about the Mercy story as it relates to the, the context today. Yeah, sure. So and just to give a little bit of context uh, on uh, Mercy, we're a 43,000 coworker um, Catholic healthcare ministry. So we're headquartered out of St. Louis. And then, um, you know, we're over eight different states here in the uh, Midwest. And uh, from a recruitment perspective, uh, you know, we're sitting around 6,000 openings. Um, you know, I can tell you, you know, looking, um, you know, back uh, at the past, you know, really three years, um, you know, efficiency has really been a, uh, a big focus of ours. Uh, we um, kind of went from um, pre-pandemic, we started to talk about how can we do things more efficiently. We were set up uh, initially very location-based recruitment and talked about how can we um, take off that location-based recruitment and do more skills-based and, and create those skills teams. Um, you know, I can tell you as part of that process, you know, went through a full Lean Six Sigma review and um, so I feel like, you know, kind of getting up to, you know, where, where we are with Dahlia, the, the focus has really been on innovation and, and efficiency for the last several years. Um, our past three years, we've had all-time highs from a higher number, um, you know, averaging uh, just over 19,000 hires per year. Uh, we just wrapped up our first quarter. Um, and we're already on pace to eclipse that. And uh, we've, we've been watching that 20,000 mark, hoping to, to hit that. And so um, from a recruitment perspective, uh, we've got eight different teams um, that do skill-based uh, type recruiting. Much of it's uh, more clinical-based, um, work with different job boards as well. Um, and so, um, so yeah, really... Uh, like I said, efficiency has been the focus. If you want to move um, to the next slide, 
Um, Sam and I connected uh, very early in the year and, and talked about, um, he, you know, he told me about Dahlia. And really the, the focus on our side was how, uh, you know, we're performing well year over year, uh, but the projections with Mercy's just continued growth. We just had an acquisition earlier this month, um, smaller health system in Missouri, um, have uh, some other potentials out there as well. And so, um, you know, from our standpoint, you know, we wanted to continue to operate, you know, as we were, but how can we continue to just grow uh, that footprint in our uh, recruitment strategy? And, um, you know, really wanted to look, we felt like we had a lot of top of funnel recruitment uh, and really wanted to look more at the conversion. There's only so much from an advertising perspective, um, you know, 6,000 6, openings that you can uh, continue to send out to different job boards. Um, but, you know, at some point you have to, to scale that and, and take different approaches. So, um, so really, you know, we were looking at that conversion, how can we do better and save our workers um, so, some time and, and be more strategic? Sam, if you want to talk a little bit, kind of from your perspective, those kinds Yeah, sure. So I think like we're really focused at Dahlia on high volume efficiency. And that's across a lot of different sectors, but really in healthcare, there seems to be a really acute pain when there's like a combination of high volume needs and such a shortage of skilled workers. And so we feel and have found that we're able to help like these high high volume healthcare hiring companies very quickly by just adding efficiency to what they're already doing. And what we've seen is with job advertising, typically to get more volume, and meet hiring goals, you have to spend more on a per click, per applicant, and per hire basis as you scale up your spend just because of the competition for the same job seekers. And so most of our customers who are spending kind of lose that efficiency and the ROI uh, gets harder to maintain as you scale up. And so what we've been able to do is really focus in on converting the traffic that you already have coming to the site from these various paid and organic sources to allow you to get that efficiency gain while you keep hitting those high volume targets, especially with hard to fill roles in healthcare. Um, so uh, maybe I just give a high level on like the funnel and how we see Dahlia mixing into this. So. Um, this is a traditional marketing funnel. I'm sure everyone has seen this from awareness down to the conversion point. The ultimate conversion point is like you hired somebody. Um, so Mercy and many other companies are, are really good at driving uh, top of funnel awareness. And usually this is in the form of organic. Like you may invest quite a bit in your career site, in your employer brand, in content, describing what it's like to work at your company to try, try to attract the right people. Um, and also there's paid job advertising. And for Mercy, it's these two sites, Indeed and ZipRecruiter, um, but there's a range of other paid uh, sites driving traffic to the, to the career site. Plus, you know, our other clients work with many different uh, programmatic vendors to drive top of funnel awareness. Um, in fact, we've been able to work pretty closely with AppCast here to make sure that this was successful. Um, so there's this top of funnel driving interest, driving people to the site, but uh, data from a lot of different vendors, specifically AppCast, shows that a small percentage of first-time visitors will complete a job application in that first visit. And so that's really where Dahlia comes in. Um, so we come in after the, the job figures have hit the site, they've shown that initial interest, and then we help get them to convert and take a meaningful action. And that's typically applying to a job. So... We fall kind of separate from traditional job advertising, a little lower in the in the funnel, really to maximize the visitors and get more of them to apply to a job. So I'll, I'll take you through and show you how we do that today. Um, but the point is working with what you have to increase conversion and get more efficiency without having to spend more money to do that. Hey, Sam, before we, I'm going to have you segue to that too. And the what I what somebody was asking about how we move from quantity to quality, and I know you're going to touch on that um, when you talk about process and when you get to results too. But just giving you the heads up, that definitely was one of the first questions that came in. So, cool. Yeah. Sounds good. 
Yeah, I mean, I can touch on that now. I think in terms of uh, like when you're thinking about high volume recruitment, like quantity is always a factor. You've got certain hiring goals that you've got to meet, but quality, like the percentage of people that you're actually hiring is a really important measure um, for most companies because you don't just want to keep spending more on job tiers who might not be qualified or might not be likely to go through your hiring process. And so when you define quality, it really, you have to have a definition for it. And most of the companies we work with define that in the recruiting funnel as the percentage of people who apply that actually get hired. And so um, when you think about the nature of job search, people out there applying to lots of different jobs are casting a really wide net. They want to increase their own opportunities. And so if you're applying to a lot of jobs, what's the likelihood you're going to go through the hiring process at any one of those individual companies? Well, it increases substantially if you can build a relationship with that brand, learn a bit more about it and be more invested when you it's time for you to make that application, then you're much more likely to go through the hiring process. And so e-commerce has the same challenges. Um, so you can see this screenshot, this is Crate and Barrel. Like they are driving high volume traffic to their site to get people to make a purchase. But similar to recruitment, very few of the first time visitors from paid ads will convert and make a purchase. And so what e-commerce has figured out is that if we can get people into our remarketing engine through a signup like this and have them start to uh, receive products and updates on an ongoing basis over time, we'll warm them up. We'll familiarize them, build trust, build a stronger engagement, and ultimately bring them back to convert at a later point in time when we may have just completely lost them from a first visit where we only gave them one option, which is to buy something, and they weren't ready to do that. So in recruitment, it's the same thing. When someone visits that site, if their only option is to apply to a job and there's nothing else for them to do to connect with you in an easy way, you may lose them. And so that's really where Dahlia comes in to really apply this e-commerce solution to recruitment. So I guess we can take a peek at what we do for Mercy, like very similar to what you just saw in e-commerce. Um, so when job seekers are coming in and that's either from an organic search, maybe they came from the Mercy website over the careers page or from a paid ad, we try to engage them and get the people who are not ready to apply. So if they visit and they exit the site, we'll pop a form and we get them engaged with a job alert. So instead of losing them completely, because most people, 95% will not complete an application on their first visit, we give them an opportunity to stay updated about Mercy. And what this does is it allows Mercy to build really strong brand engagement with these job seekers on a regular basis. And so we automate that. And so Kevin, if you roll to the next slide, I'll just show you an example of, of what we do based on the information we collect in that form. We send out job alerts over email and text and it's fully automated. And really the text alerts that we send is what drives the bulk of the applications back uh, into Mercy because most job tiers today are on their phones, but especially in healthcare, most of the signups are coming from a mobile device. And so being able to engage people very quickly, very simply via text is the key to driving up that conversion of that original visit. And so there's a few really important elements to this that make it effective. I guess the first thing is the matching. So when we talk about quality, right? Like we don't just want more applications for application sake. We want people applying who are likely to be hired. So we make sure that the matching is, is structured in a way that we're only sending the most highly relevant jobs in the locations that are meaningful to that job seeker. And they're really timely. Uh, so if you think of a job search cycle, like how long is it that somebody will be on the market these days looking for a job? And depending on the industry, it can be one day or a week, but typically it's not much longer than that for high volume hiring roles. And so it's really important to get these alerts out pretty frequently right after that initial sign up to make an impact and keep your brand top of mind for that job seeker. So it's a combination of frequency, getting the alerts out there on the channels where the job seeker is engaging and making sure those matches are highly relevant and a really solid match for the job seeker. Hey, Sam, I wanted yeah. to, um, to ask a, a question for, for both of you actually that relates to this. 
I mean, uh, and and Paul would love to hear your take on it too. You, you, a couple of things you mentioned. You mentioned that the bulk of the conversions are coming in via text. Is, is that what I heard you say? Yep. That's yeah, right. which, which makes sense because we 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 know that text based outreach has the highest, also the highest level of deliverability versus email anymore these days, for that matter. So and and just as an FYI from our own benchmark research from the candidate experience side, um, eighty percent plus of the highest rated companies in our research, one of the many things that they're doing and or implementing is text based outreach. And communication for sure. So I think that's a big win. But you know, and Paul, particularly for you, I mean, this we all we all know this is the least glamorous part for the job seeker, right? Usually is is just is applying for a job at the end of the day. But how have you seen this this kind of impact? Um, and if you're doing any candidate experience measurement at all, or even if you're not, anecdotally, how is it impacting the experience for your candidates? Yeah, I mean, I can tell you, I mean, as far as the volume, have been very happy. I mean, I feel like it's a very easy experience for the candidate. Um, it's it's really more about opening access for them that, um, you know, they have multiple ways to to connect with us. And so this yeah. is the, a different avenue that, that we've given them. Um, I think there's also a big piece as far as uh, recruiter productivity, um, you know, uh, stacking our, our pipelines and filling those are always a big uh, focus and our recruiters, you know, in general carry high rec loads, you know, I'd say about 70 to 80 per recruiter and it's depending on the service line too. Uh, but there's only so much time, you know, when you have a high volume rec load that you can uh, spend toward that proactive recruitment. So having this type of automation in place behind the scenes really powers our recruiters that they can spend um, the more human piece, the more conversion and the higher, uh, we can get them to that candidate uh, step uh, easier, having this uh, go out to them and then really empower our recruiters to do the, uh, the those human touch points that uh, ultimately convert into uh, hires for the system. Yeah, consistent communication and engagement always make a, a big difference in our research every year of, of a more positive sentiment, more perception of fairness from the candidates. So it, I'm I'm great. It's great to hear that. And I'm sure that is definitely the case, as you've shared. Uh, there is another a quite question that I think that came in that I wanted to throw out there now, too. Um, do the automated tax go out to candidates that may have been previously declined by the company? And if so, like, what is that? What is that time frame frequency? Yeah, so they do. And this is today, it's not connected to the hiring status uh, inside of the ATS. So if somebody was declined and rejected by Mercy maybe three months ago, but they come back to the career site again today, they can sign up for one of these alerts and we don't take that into account. And uh, like Paul, like let's talk about if that makes sense for Mercy and how you see that. But what we know from some of our other high volume companies is it's sometimes a job is filled and closed because they found the person or they made the hire, not because, and they rejected others, not because they were not qualified, but, but just because that job was no longer available. And so it doesn't mean you're unqualified for the business or that particular job. It just meant that that moment in time, it didn't work for you. And so we see this program as like allowing you to cast the widest net to get the best possible match candidate. Um, and so if that means somebody didn't uh, make it previously, it doesn't eliminate them from uh, future opportunities. Yeah, you know, and 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 Paul, I don't know if you do this or not, but do you, I mean, do you encourage um, past applicants to consider other jobs in the future as well as that part of the alerts, obviously, that go out to them? That would make sense, right? Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, that's a, definitely a big focus of ours. Yeah. Uh, silver medalists, you know, ensuring that they don't slip through the cracks with 6,000 open, you know, openings. And, uh, you know, this year from a candidate perspective, um, you know, we're, we've moved over 50,000 candidates per month that, that are coming into the system. And from a recruiter perspective and, and keeping those straight, you know, we, we have to have multiple avenues to, to reach back out. Um, you know, we have some internal strategies, but then, you know, feel like we've been able to really um, utilize Dahlia as kind of another recruitment arm that that happens um, 
at the same time to, to connect them to, to openings? Because that's that's a question, uh, and I'm sure most on the call get from, you know, hiring leaders that, uh, you know, you have a medical assistant role open and another one was filled you know, across town. And what, what about those candidates? How can we get them over here? So sure. it's a big focus. In That's town. great. Yeah. Thank you, Paul, for sharing. And then, Sam, another question that did come in. How does this, if at all, apply to LinkedIn recruiter? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I guess this would be totally outside of LinkedIn recruiter because um, what we're doing is really about the company's career site. Sure. Job seekers visiting that career site. So I would say it doesn't really connect with that. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Should we go to the next uh, slide? Yeah, I see a question around quality. And so I think the next slide speaks to that a bit. Yeah, um, right. And so maybe what I can do is just define some of these stats because sure, I know please. like three numbers on a slide. So um, we wanted to share some of the impact um, that we saw from adding Dahlia uh, to Mercy's recruitment funnel. And so I'll just start at the top. Um, you know, the re-engagement that we're doing, these job, the, the form, the job alerts runs across all the traffic, including paid traffic. And so when we just looked at the paid traffic and how that was impacted, um, so that's paid traffic from all the various sources that Mercy is spending on. We saw an overall increase in visit, so career site visitors to completed application of 2.7%. And um, what I'll mention is that this is still with a um, non-maximized budget with Dahlia. So Dahlia is not full run uh, on Mercy. Um, we're like still in, a, I guess, like a, a test phase where it's somewhat of a limited budget. So there's room for growth here. There's room for bigger impact. But at the phase we're at today, We've been able to deliver a 2.7% increase in visitors who are applying across all paid channels. But the really exciting part that speaks to quality is the application to hire uh, increase, that rate increased by 6%. And so Mercy is now hiring 6% more of applications from all of the paid sources because of this re-engagement. And so when you put those two numbers together, you look at the full funnel, which is this 8.8%. So of uh, visitors to the career site, um, Mercy is now hiring 8.8% more of those visitors than without the Dahlia re-engagement. And so really we focus on this conversion to hire because that to us really signals quality. It's not just driving up more volume. Yes, we were able to deliver more applications, but the big increase came in those relevant applications where applicants are actually getting hired. And so um, when we talk to the companies that we're working with and try to understand the challenges they face, every single one, even in healthcare, is getting uh, applicants who are not qualified and too many of them, or people who come in and apply, but they're just not likely to go through the hiring process because they're casting a really wide net. And so our main driver here, the really big thing that we focus on at Dahlia is this quality portion defined as applicant to hire ratio. Yeah, and I, from my perspective, kind of add on, um, in general, you know, throughout my time here at Mercy, we we do like doing different pilots, trying different things out, always looking to, to innovate. And so we started a, a three-month pilot back in April, and, um, you know, we, we started at a set amount, and uh, actually within the first month, we actually doubled that, because we saw pretty quickly that it was working well, that we were getting good results. Uh, from it, you know, from my perspective, looking back, you know, we we connect monthly and and look at data and you know how we're doing, and I kind of take that back and compare um, against other sources as well. And um, one of the things that's been very impactful is every month we've gotten better as far as the CPAs, the the hires. Um, we're continuing to to kind of perfect and uh, hone in on uh, what's most effective. Um, uh, when we set up the initial pilot, uh, we mirrored our uh, advertising uh, campaigns that we had with a couple other uh, external vendors because uh, we we really wanted to compare and, and kind of contrast from that quality and and you know what's converting um, and, and across the board it's it's done great since then. I mean we um, have been able to generate over seven thousand uh, new candidates uh, you know into the system. 
Uh, and then, um, you know, ultimately we've uh, brought in, um, you know, 200 hires and uh, a multitude of other offers on, on top of that. And so um, it's been something that, uh, you know, Sam mentioned, we're, we're not necessarily fully leveraged. I don't think that's on the Dahlia side as much as when you work off of a, a you know, a flat budget. So something that we're always uh, looking to, uh, to increase on, but um, but yeah, the the increase in hires, uh, you know, we've seen, and then from the, you know, I touched on it a little bit earlier from the candidate perspective and total applications, um, kind of concurrently with. I think some of it's the market, but then some of it's definitely Dolly. Uh, uh, we're every month hitting new highs as far as the number of candidates that are um, not just visiting our site, but actually putting applications in. So that's been uh, when. Growth is, uh, you know, continues to be the projection, and we have hospitals that are opening up new service lines and such. Uh, that's something that that's definitely needed on our side. Absolutely, we've got some more questions, and and I wanted to first kind of bring up the point. One of the the ratings that we ask for in our candidate experience research is how likely are you to apply again, and it's a four point scale, and. It, the past few years, it's been about a third of the candidates who said they're extremely likely to apply again based on our experience. But from the employer's perspective, you don't necessarily want everybody applying, right? I mean, the reality, that is the reality. So it was more of a kind of a comment, but I'm kind of rephrasing it as a question that somebody did bring up. You've got lots of folks that have been rejected that will never be considered, right? And you can call them part of that population or the serial appliers. How do each of you what, what are some thoughts that you have from both you, Paul and Sam, about how to address that? Just curious. Yeah, I mean, I could just jump in with, uh, with like my thoughts on that. I mean, we follow the data and um, really try to look at job seeker engagement and behavior and let that be a driver of the decisions we make in products. And then also obviously look at the results and the data we're getting back from our clients in terms of like, is this working for you? Is this making a positive impact? And so we just try to adjust the product to drive uh, the data points that are meaningful for our clients. So hires, like is what we're doing in product driving a higher percentage of hires is driving an like, increase in applicant to hire ratio specifically. And if we can keep measuring that we are doing that, to us, it seems like a positive for both the employer and the job seeker. We're bringing mm -hmm. in people who are more and more likely to be hired and therefore kind of like eliminating those application opportunities of irrelevant applicants. So we're super data oriented and that's our driving force. And so if that means people who've been rejected in the past, we're able to bring them back to apply to different jobs where they're now likely to be hired, then that's a huge plus. And so that's our focus. Like we're very data oriented when we do this analysis, but at the same time, we also have job seeker support. And so if job seekers uh, respond, respond back to the text messages or emails that we send, there's a live person there who reads those messages and can respond to help those job seekers out. And so when we find nuances and challenges with, with what job seekers are saying, we share that feedback uh, directly with our clients. And, you know, we can find certain patterns. So for example, if somebody was reject, rejected for a job, but we send them that exact same job, like that's something that we can we can be aware of and make adjustments for. Um, but yeah, I mean, Paul, curious what you think in terms of the experience, like what are your thoughts on like rejected candidates and yeah. how you might want to treat those? You know, from our perspective, you know, our, our team uh, in our service level agreements uh, for, for leaders, you know, we uh, review every single application within one business day. I mean, we run data on that every week. Uh, and so, you know, our, our recruiters, you know, I do truly feel like anybody that comes in, we're reviewing, um, you know, there's... Uh, at Mercy, we, we have a talent assessment as part of the uh, application process. So um, we already have kind of some indicators of where they're strong and where they might be, uh, you know, fit well, ultimately. Um, but, um, but while we touch every single application, at the same time, when you have a high volume of recs, you have to spend your time with the right people as well. So we really try to 
empower our recruiters to, um, you know, to the, those high talents, you know, high mercy from a culture standpoint fit, um, you know, let's maximize uh, on that side. And, um, and on the other side, I mean, we, we do have some individuals, obviously, that, that apply and continue to, um, and, um, you know, sometimes it's just not a great fit. Sometimes we have a previous interview, previous experience and such. And uh, so you, you work through that as uh, dignified, you know, as possible and make it a good experience. Um, but ultimately, you know, we, we want our recruiters spending time with those that are the best fit for, for their roles. Thank you both very much for, we've got some more questions too. And this kind of relates to what, what we've been, obviously the, the entire time we've been talking about, but it, you know, for a lot of applicants, I, I would always argue that this kind of engagement that you're, that Dalyu helps you with is definitely important and makes a difference in the overall experience. But the question was more about, you know, what if they're not coming in through the career site, right? What if they're coming in through the easy apply um, process with the job boards? Is, I mean, is that something that's then also still mitigated with, with the Dahlia interface, Sam, I mean, to, to make it a better experience for them, because that's definitely different, right? When they're going click. Yeah, it is. And, and we do have an option for that. So for companies who are getting most of their applications through an easy apply that is not connected into the ATS as a full application, um, then we have a way to bring those easy applies, which are generally looked at more as leads than something equivalent to a full application the ATS. We bring those easy apply leads into Dahlia's remarketing engine. And so what we do is um, like we will we'll bring them in and then we'll fire up the job alerts to get a certain percent of those quick applies or easy applies to come back to complete full applications in the ATS. So we provide sort of an automation layer to those quick applies that helps drive full ATS applications in tandem with the recruiters and sourcing teams who are going after those easy applies to bring them in. Um, so yeah, we do have an option for that. Um, and uh, it's interesting because there's a lot of really great talent there, but the problem is really acute for, for easy apply candidates because generally they're applying to lots of different jobs and lots of different companies. Right. So being able to quickly connect with them and brand yourself on a, a repeat basis through the alerts that we send is really valuable to help you stand out. Yeah, absolutely. And another question about the the results that you had been sharing from this slide too. Are are we talking about specific job families? Is it across? Is it across the board? Does it include nursing? Is it entry level administrative roles? What are we talking about here? Yeah, so I'm happy to speak to that from a campaign st standpoint. So um, I think I mentioned we have six different campaigns that we have set up with Dahlia. So one's focused on like our clinic roles. So LPN and medical assistants, a lot of times we kind of group those together so we could hire either. Um, we have one that's focused on kind of patient services, like medical receptionists, those that are, um, you know, greeting the patient and checking them in. We have a general tech type of campaign when you think of like uh, imaging technologists, any, any sort of technologists that you might have, um, you know, we have going toward that campaign, um, have one as well, kind of the, the direct patient care, your patient care associates. Um, we do have an RN one um, and then care management's a smaller one that we have. What um, Some of what we found, uh, we initially had seven um, and um, one of our campaigns, uh, we just call it a specific Rex campaign, and it's the the, the greasy wheel uh, or the this the loudest wheel gets the grease. I'm messing up the uh, the actual uh, example, but um, anytime we struggle with a role, uh, our service line leads will reach out to me, and then we'll look to kind of sponsor them as more of a one off. Um, and so, some of what we found with the specific Rex is, you know, when it's you might have an IT role, a legal role. Uh, it's, it's really across the board, those type of openings. Uh, and we found the more specific we can be um, with our campaigns, the, the higher that they're going to convert. So uh, the six that I mentioned, um, all of them are converting. If uh, they wouldn't be in there if they weren't con converting well, ultimately. And RNs, 
you know, very early on, we saw some of our entry level do really well. And so I, I thought that this was going to be a tool more on the entry level side. And then uh, really after that first month, we made some adjustments and then are seeing those RNs and, and more license roles uh, starting to convert now. That's great because that's definitely been a per perennial struggle, right? And challenge on the RN side. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 100%. Uh, Hey, Sam, and that could be, this could be for both of you, but pr primarily for you with the, the texting option, how do you ensure that uh, companies A are, are compliant with spam compliance? I mean, candidates have to obviously opt in for this. Can they unsubscribe if they don't want them anymore? How does that work for the texting? Yeah, I mean, compliance is a huge deal. And that's where we see most employers struggle uh, when they do this themselves from a tool that they buy like a CRM or, or a texting product. Um, you have to be really careful when you're sending messages at high volume. So it's a huge priority for us. Um, so we have opt-ins like people directly opt in to receive both the email alerts and the text alerts. And then we make sure in every message that we send, we provide very clear and obvious opt-outs, either an unsubscribe uh, link in the email, or they can type back anything to indicate they want to unsubscribe over text and we'll infer that and opt them out. So I would say that's like the minimum that anyone should do, but really uh, you need to actively manage each user's behavior to make sure you're not oversending. And that's really the key to success to any sort of high volume campaigns is making sure that you maintain a high open rate with the carriers over text and yeah. with the email providers. And the way that we ensure that is we actually automatically unsubscribe many, many more people than unsubscribe themselves. And so what we look at is the open rate for each user, the engagement rate. And as those engagement rates drop off, we just unsubscribe them and we just automatically stop sending. And so we'd like to get ahead of that and make sure that we know if somebody's not engaging, that maybe they found a job or something else has come up. We just turn it off to prevent annoying people and prevent a negative experience. And that maintains a really high open rate. And the benefit of these high open rates is one compliance, but also extremely high deliverability. So the problem that we see many of our customers fall into, they'll get a CRM, they've got 100,000 candidates, and they'll set up a campaign and fire off an email to 10 or 15,000 people in one shot. And then they're in spam. And it's very hard to get out of that. So you've really got to make sure that you maintain high open rates by sending effectively. And when you have a high open rate, you then win a very high deliverability rate. And so the deliverability is the key to success here. And so we have really high deliverability over text and email because we make sure to unsubscribe people, basically. <laughs> it's kind of weird to say that, but but that's our approach. No, that, but that's imp it's important to note that, right? Because I think mm -hmm. to your point that, you know, there's definitely touting the power of text engagement with candidates is 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 fantastic. But if you are if you're immediately in the spam bucket, then it's it's all that work and that investment it goes down the drain to a certain degree, right? Because it is hard to get out of that bucket once you're there. So having the right partner. External, externally with it, with it, like Dahlia, for example, and even and internally too, because a lot of the times corp, it's the corporate marketing side that are going to be much more in tune with spam compliance and, mm -hmm. and, and texting customers and, and sending out emails. But that's not going to be the case necessarily with the TA teams, at least not in my experience. So it's good that yeah. you have the right partner to help you do that. And I would just one other recommendation for, for any employer who's going to be doing texting at high volume on their own uh, with some sort of tech. Um, it's very critical to have direct open communication with the carriers and or through a, a partner who delivers your text messages. So there's always some sort of underlying technology that's actually delivering the text messages, whether that's Twilio or some other technology company that does that. They have direct communication with the carriers and can facilitate that, but that's critical for high volume texting. Without that, you're very likely to um, fall out of compliance. And so we keep those lines of communications open and are regularly in contact with these carriers to make sure that the texting is appropriate and has high throughput. So that's just a really important piece of it. Got it. Excellent. 
anything else, Sam, that you wanted to talk to results wise um, on this slide or anything else about that, the context today? We've, we've gone through all the questions so far. If you have another question, but oh, maybe we have another one right now. Hold on. I spoke too soon. Uh, a lot of organizations on this call could conceivably find ourselves competing for the same applicants, of course, especially if you're being very competitive regionally too. How do you help us stand out against Mercy, for example? No offense, Mercy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, what we're doing for Mercy, you know, we do this for lots of different companies. And so the experience is really branded for the company that we're working with. And so you could think of it as like a siloed thing. So um, when job seekers come into Mercy's career site, we're going to deliver them a Mercy experience. Like the form is going to come up to get people to sign up for Mercy's alerts. And so it's really a dedicated experience for the job seeker. And so for other companies, how do we help them stand out and compete? Well, I guess if everyone, every company in the world is using Dahlia, then I guess it's quite similar. Everyone's going to be getting those alerts. Um, but it's really about um, like the jobs and, and the matching that we do. So I think from one, if we look at our, and compare our customers to each other, um, it's a tough question. I mean, we try to provide the best results for each customer. And I think if there's a lot of competition in a specific market and we have both of those customers, we just do our very best for both uh, and give them the same opportunity to, to connect tightly with the job seeker. Maybe I don't have a great answer for that, but we just try to make it work for you. Uh, even if you're in a highly competitive market and we have one of your competitors as a customer, which might be the direct question. Um, yeah, from my perspective, you know, I'd say, you know, again, I mean, it's multiple angles. Dahlia has been very good at converting for us. But, you know, when we when we look, it, it has to be a holistic approach where you can't necessarily have different tools across the board that that don't have, you know, strategy ultimately together. Um, you know, I think public perception and, and knowing, um, you know, where um, you know, Glassdoor, you know, indeed reviews are and um, where we can continue to get better. I think that those ultimately help to convert down funnel. Um, and, and so, so it's a holistic, uh, really, approach that, that you have to take to ultimately hit uh, what those job seekers are looking for. Right, absolutely. And you're, and you're constantly adjusting, right? I mean, you're, you're looking at your data, looking at your results. Are you driving you know, better applicants, a better conversion rate, potentially, obviously, quality over time and adjusting accordingly, right? Definitely. Yeah, got to constantly look at that data. Absolutely. Um, another question, could you show us what the platform looks like for the candidate when they sign up? Is that something you can do? Or is it one of the, was it one of the slides I go back to? What do you think, Sam? Um, I mean, those slides are kind of figurative, but what I would, yeah. I would advise is, just go to Mercy's career site and sign up. As Got it. Job. There you sign go. Up, alerts Good idea. And you'll get the experience. And so the experience, 99% of it is the alerts that we send. So it's email alerts and text alerts. That's really the job seeker interface. There is a site where the job seekers can come log into Dahlia to adjust their preferences. Um, but most of the engagement is outbound. It's really push notifications. Very similar to the way that the world of social media works today it's really pushing to you and and that's that's the way people are consuming content today so we replicate that these alerts are pushing that's like 98% of the interaction with dahlia it's with yeah. our text or emails got it excellent thank you mm -hmm. um any other questions from anybody no i'll add definitely go to our website you know if you know any rns feel free to sign them up too <laughs> <laughs> of course right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um thank you both any any last words from from either of you besides getting folks to sign up paul any last words from you or sam no i don't think so i think we've covered a lot today okay. and, um yeah i appreciate right you yeah thanks paul yeah thank you very much and um sam anything else before we uh, wrap it up uh if you want to chat with us uh visit us at dolly.co or you can email me i'm sam at dolly.co Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending today. Again, we'll send out the recording tomorrow to you all. And um, thanks again. Have a great rest of your week. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin.
Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.